Hey guys, John from flymikealpha.com and today we're going to be going over area forecast FAs. What they are, how to use them, and when you might actually want to use one. So for starters, we want to go to aviationweather.gov, go on up to forecast, come down to area forecast, and you might be asking, well, when are we ever even going to use an area forecast? Well, you might be familiar with METARs and TAFs already, and remember that a TAF is only good for a five nautical mile radius around the airport. So only for that five mile radius in the terminal aerodrome, since it's a terminal aerodrome forecast. So since it's only good for about a 10 mile ring around the airport, some airports don't have TAFs and may not be covered by another airport's TAF. For example, the Venice airport has just a METAR, and so we need to look at the area forecast to tell us what the weather is going to be like in the future. So we can come to the Miami area, since we see all the different areas of the country, we're going to be located in the Miami area, and we're going to read up top here when it was issued, basically our issuance times with the date and time, so the 7th of October, at 1956 Zulu, it was amended. We have a synopsis for VFR clouds and weather, and that synopsis is valid until the 8th at 1200 Zulu. Clouds and weather is going to be valid until the 8th at 0600 Zulu, and the outlook is valid from 0600 to 1200 Zulu on the 8th. So area forecasts are good for 12 hours with a six hour outlook. So 18 hours total, but really 12 hour periods and they're issued three times daily. So every eight hours a new one's issued. And this area forecast is good for North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, Florida, and coastal waters east of 85 degrees west. And they're talking about longitude there. So everything east of that 85 degree west longitude line. They also say here, see Airmit Sierra for IFR conditions and mountain obscuration. Remember Airmit Sierra refers to uh, low visibility, like we have Airmit Tango in Zulu as well, Tango for turbulence and Zulu for icing. Also says here that TS, thunderstorms, imply severe or greater turbulence, severe icing, low level wind shear, and IFR conditions. That doesn't sound fun. Also, they'll always say this on area forecast, non-MSL heights denoted by AGL or CIG. That's because in an area forecast, our cloud bases and tops are given in MSL compared to a METAR or TAF being in AGL values. Since an area forecast covers a large area with undulating terrain that could vary greatly in its heights, MSL, it doesn't make sense to try to forecast AGL values necessarily. Now, this also happens to be well Hurricane Matthew is going on, so we're going to skip over that since we don't have many hurricanes that we normally deal with. But let's just go ahead and look at the forecast, say, for South Carolina. Well, South Carolina says the coastal plains overcast from 1,000 to 2,000 feet, MSL, layered on up to flight level 250, 25,000 feet, occasional visibility, 3 to 5 statute miles with light rain showers and mist. After 00, zero Zulu, Wind will be northeast, 25 knots, gusting to 40 knots because of that hurricane. And the outlook is IFR. And then they're going to tell you whether, if the outlook's VFR, IFR, or MVFR, marginal VFR, they're going to tell you why. Well, it's outlook's IFR because of the ceiling, CIG, the rain showers, mist, and the wind. And now you may say, well, wind doesn't really affect you know, visibility or anything like that. Well, it makes it really bad flying conditions and it's probably kicking up a lot of dust and dirt and mist and things like that into the air, making it IFR conditions. Now for the area around Piedmont, overcast 1,000 feet to 2,000 feet, layered up to flight level 250, scattered light rain showers, areas of visibility dipping down into the three to five mile range with mist after 00 Zulu, Wind will be northeast at 20 knots, gusting to 30 knots. The outlook is IFR, again, due to the ceiling, rain showers, mist, and wind. For the mountains area, broken clouds to overcast clouds at 4,000 feet. So a broken to overcast layer, it'll be varying in how, uh, how much coverage there is. Layered on up to flight level 250, widely scattered light rain showers with areas of visibility dipping down into three to five statute miles with mist, the outlook again, IFR, due to the ceiling, rain showers, and mist. If we take a look here at Georgia, we can see the southeastern part of Georgia to the coastal plains, overcast 1,000 feet to 2,000 feet, layered on up to flight level 250, occasional visibility dipping down to three to five statute miles, and light rain showers and mist. 
Winds will be north-northeast at 30 knots, gusting to 45. Outlook IFR, again, due to the ceiling, rain showers, mist, and wind. Now, what do they mean when they say occasional, OCNL? Well, occasional basically means there's a greater than 50% chance for less than half of the forecast period. So for that forecast period, it's not going to be like that for more than half the time, but they're more than 50% sure that it will happen less than half of the time, hence the occasional. Now, for northwestern Georgia, scattered to broken clouds, 3,500 feet, tops up to 8,000 feet. Outlook, marginal VFR, mostly due to the ceiling. Now you can say, what do you mean it's marginal VFR due to the ceiling? The bases are at 3,500 feet. That sounds like great VFR weather. Well, remember, northwestern Georgia has higher elevation. That's not 3,500 feet AGL, 3,500 feet MSL. So you're probably looking at marginal VFR conditions with low clouds, maybe only 1,000 or 1,500 feet AGL. The remainder of Georgia will be broken clouds to overcast clouds at 1,500 to 2,500, layered on up to 20,000 feet, flight level 200, widely scattered light rain showers, and the outlook is marginal VFR due to the ceiling, the rain showers, and becoming between 0,900 Zulu and 1,200 Zulu IFR, and that's going to be due to the ceiling, rain showers, and mist. So the outlook's marginal VFR for now, and then becomes somewhere between 0,900 and 1,200 Zulu, becomes IFR. Now, we can look at Florida here, and they section up the state of Florida different ways based on where the weather is. Sometimes you may have the entire panhandle together. Sometimes you may have just the western half of the panhandle or the eastern half of the panhandle. So just noting how to tell what part of the state you're actually looking at. And again, it's all formatted the same way. Say here for the northern half of the peninsula of Florida, overcast clouds, 1,500 feet to 2,500 feet, layered on up to flight level 250, 25,000 feet, occasional visibility dipping down in a three to five statute mile range with light rain showers, mist, and the wind will be north-northwest at 30 knots gusting to 50, becoming at around 0, 0,200 Zulu to 0, 0,500 Zulu, widely scattered light rain showers, occasional visibility dipping down to three to five statute miles with mist, the wind then dropping down to west-northwest at 25 knots, gusting to 40, and the outlook marginal VFR due to the rain showers and wind. Now, a couple other things to note here. Sometimes you may not see the wind or the visibility for a certain area. Typically, when the visibility is forecast to be between uh, six miles or more, it'll just be plus six statute miles or left off totally. When it's the wind's going to be 20 knots sustained at the surface or greater, then they're going to start telling you what that wind speed actually is. But if the, wind, if the visibility is going to be 10, 15 miles, they won't tell you anything about it. They just leave it off there. And again, the wind will oftentimes be left off there as well. The only reason why we see wind here is, well, there's a hurricane out there kicking up lots of wind. Now, you'll also see other uh, abbreviations. We'll throw a couple of them up on the screen here. Isolated, so isolated single cells. Widely scattered means widely scattered, but less than 25% of the area is affected. Scattered areas of 25 to 54% of the area affected would be the SCT, so that would mean scattered. And numerous would be greater than 55% of the area affected. Widespread, greater than 55% of the area affected as well. So numerous and widespread are pretty much the same thing. Now, the status of an area forecast can be amended, corrected, or RTD delayed. So amended, basically this one is amended because things are changing out there and they want to give you a more of an update rather than waiting till eight hours later to issue the new area forecast. So hopefully that gave you a good insight into what you can expect on area forecasts. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching and thank you so much for sharing us on Facebook, Twitter, and all the other social media sites. If you have any questions about the video at all, just leave them in the comments below and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. Be sure to give us a thumbs up on our video and you can subscribe to us to keep up with all our latest episodes right over here on the right. Also, check out some of these other helpful videos below and remember, if you can't fly every day, then fly at We'll see you all next time.